All right. So now we have Adam Hines, who is running for lieutenant governor. Um, as our scheduled one of one of our two scheduled speakers for tonight. Great, um, thanks. I I love watching the choreography. I wasn't sure when when I was um, you know, stepping up, so I appreciate the, the opportunity to talk with all of you. And honestly, it it, it feels like um, what are we a month and a year um, after the attack on our capital? It warms my heart that at seven thirty on a Thursday, you all are taking the time out of your days to um, to make sure the infrastructure of our democracy is alive and well. So thanks for doing this for the party. Um, so I, I currently represent uh, 52 uh, uh, municipalities in the state Senate, and I decided to run for lieutenant governor because I'm convinced this is one of those rare moments where we have a, an opportunity collectively um, to take a generational leap towards equity and progress. Um, it's what got me in the race. It's a moment that calls for leaders who are unafraid to take on the big issues. Um, and folks with the background of bringing people together. I spent nearly 10 years in the Middle East doing exactly that, um, working for the United Nations. I was involved in negotiations in Iraq, um, in Jerusalem and Syria. Um, and I've got to say, nothing prepares you for standing up for your region in the state Senate or, or leading on the tough issues as Lieutenant Governor, quite like holding your ground when drafting exchanges in a ceasefire negotiation with the foreign minister of Syria at a time when they're attacking their own citizens. Uh, but I always wanted to get back home um, and take on the big issues here. And so I um, started a program uh, in Pittsfield, actually, where I am now, uh, working with high risk kids, getting involved in violence. Um, I was then pulled to lead a second nonprofit related to mental health and, and job creation. Um, and I got to say, working on job creation in the ruin, uh, in the region I grew up in really meant the world to me. I saw you know, the, how small towns um, in, in the area, including the one I grew up in, were just kind of devastated by a shifting economy. Um, my dad uh, left a tool manufacturing company at the age of 50 to essentially retrain himself. He went back to school um, to become a teacher. And uh, he just retired as a, a teacher, a coach, uh, and a proud MTA member. It's 7.30 on a Thursday. I bet he's, uh, bet he's in a gym right now, uh, coaching basketball, um, loves this stuff. And um, I have to say, it kind of gives you this, this warning about the, the flaws in our economy, the fact that so many folks are on the edge of uh, economic disaster. Um, and as we've seen in, during COVID-19, because of decades of wage stagnation and stifled mobility and high housing costs and childcare costs, um, doesn't matter how hard you work anymore, how many hours in a day, you can still be close to the edge and it's just not right. Um, you know, after all that, I, I, I drew on a lot of those experiences and the same problem solving approach um, in coming to the Senate where I'm in my third term. Um, I'm leading our work on reimagining Massachusetts post pandemic, um, putting aside for a second, I don't know when we're going to be post pandemic. Uh, but I've taken on a lot of transportation related initiatives, including a new train service from Pittsfield to New York City, um, making sure that uh, every car bought in the, in, in, the, in the Commonwealth by 2030 is electric, uh, including with rebates to reduce prices um, and, and, and a range of those types of things. When, when districts, school districts in my um, Senate district were experiencing financial difficulties, I created a new line item for uh, schools with low and declining enrollment. Um, I already represent more municipalities than anyone in this race. Um, and you know, I, I think the role of Lieutenant Governor among many is um, you're, you're working closely with mayors and city councils. I, I, I represent 52 city councils and select boards and 25 school districts. I wanna make sure every corner of the Commonwealth feels like they're seen, that they're being lifted up, that they have, a, uh, they have access to the government um, as well. And so um, maybe I'll close with this. Um, I became a father about eight months ago, and um, when my wife gave birth to our son, Raphael, when you're a new parent, it, it certainly makes this work um, even more meaningful, right, and the fight even more uh, uh, purposeful, and uh, for example, we're, we're fighting climate change with the urgency of now, but so my generation, my son's generation can also merely exist, and uh, fighting so this generation can experience social and racial justice differently, right? Um, he, my son, in fact, is a part of the migration story. My wife, Alicia, is Mexican-American and her grandfather came to the US and drove trucks his entire life um, so that she could have every opportunity available to her. And she's knocking it out of the park. She's, uh, she's a college professor and, and blows my mind every day. And yet that type of intergenerational mobility is almost unheard of today, according to the data. 
Uh, and so that's what got me in this race, restoring that sense of opportunity for everyone. Um, we can't afford business as usual. It's great to uh, to see some some colleagues and friends, Rep Scanlon and, and Senator Feeney, if he's still here. Um, you guys uh, really, you, you know how to pick them. These are folks that are deeply respected and, and really take on the issues that matter. But I guess you know that you've already elected them. Um, and uh, so I look forward to uh, earning your support tonight or uh, at the convention and, and really working closely with you to make sure that every corner of the Commonwealth is, is represented. So thanks for giving me a few minutes here tonight. Thank you for coming, Adam. Do we have questions for Adam? Um, Adam, do you have other, Adam Scanlon, do you have your hand up? <laughs> yes. Um, I want to point out that Senator, something that Senator Hines uh, left out uh, Senator Hines is the chair of the Revenue Committee, which is a committee that's responsible for looking at different proposals related to senior property tax exemptions and trying to help out our seniors. And Senator Hines took a lot of time and spent that with me on one of our initiatives to allow cities and towns to offer um, a something called a opt-in local property tax cap for low-income seniors. That way, cities and towns don't have to file a home rule petition every time, every time they want to do something unique in terms of creating uh, something more flexible and something more palatable for their seniors. So uh, Senator Hines has been a great partner to work with uh, in terms of supporting um, property tax relief for our seniors. And I'm hoping that we can get this bill across the finish line and um, I also want to lift up the fact that, you know, Senator Hines since said um, that he's a, uh, the senator for 34 small communities like ours. And, you know, sometimes I think people forget about communities like ours. So it's nice to have someone that's running for this position, um, you know, speak, speak to the importance of that. So that's all. And, and thanks for thinking of our seniors out there, Senator. No, great work. Seriously, it's a. Um, I love the, the the local option, and um, especially when our seniors are up against so much in terms of um, inflation and and the like. And so, um, I appreciate you being creative and finding solutions. It was, it was good. That was a no brainer. That one. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Adam Hines? Oh, good. I'm getting off easy. This is great. All right. I think it's I think it's because we've had such a marathon night. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> Well, look, I'll um, I'll put my information in the in the chat, and you, if you uh, want to continue the conversation, that would be great. Okay, thank you, thank you for coming, Adam, and do put your yeah, and anything your campaign wants to send us, we'll put up on our website. Okay, great. Okay, thanks. thank you. Okay, next we have Quentin Palfrey for Attorney General. Where would he go? I'm right here. Oh, good. There you are. <laughs> Hello, Mansfield Democrats. It's so nice to look around the Zoom and see so many fr friendly faces. I love coming to Mansfield, and I'm sorry that uh, tonight we're just by Zoom, but I hope we have a chance to uh, spend some time together in person uh, before too long. Um, and I just want to start by echoing something that Adam just said. Uh, which is that you're really lucky to have such wonderful uh, representatives and wonderful leaders of this committee uh, with Adam and with Ted and with Paul. Um, and uh, you yeah, know, this is one of the best run uh, democratic uh, town committees anywhere. And so it's really nice to be back. Uh, really appreciated all your help when I was the 2018 democratic nominee for Lieutenant Governor. And I'm really proud to be running for attorney general. As a former assistant attorney general, I've seen firsthand how much impact the AG's office can have on the issues uh, that matter to us every day. I was the first chief of the healthcare division in the AG office when we were uh, implementing Massachusetts health reform laws. So I sued uh, some big insurance companies that were taking advantage of Massachusetts residents during that important time. And more generally, we were the consumer voice in that conversation, standing up uh, for consumers to make sure that everybody had access to a high quality, affordable uh, health care. And uh, so I just have a really uh, warm place in my heart for the office. I also um, had the honor uh, to serve in the White House under President Barack Obama. I was the senior advisor for jobs and competitiveness. Um, and on day one of the Biden-Harris administration, I joined as the acting general counsel of commerce, and I led a team of several hundred lawyers to help launch the Build Back Better agenda. Uh, I also uh, inherited all the legal issues that uh, Trump left us in the U.S. Census. 
and had to uh, disentangle that mess. Um, and, you know, it's been a tough few years. There was a cruelty to the Trump administration, ripping apart families and putting walls between us and our neighbors, knocking tens of millions of people off of health insurance. And there's also been this attack on the underpinnings of our democracy, attacks on truth and science, on the Constitution. I think we've really struggled with what to do with this moment in our American history. It's been a relief to have some sanity in the White House and to have narrow majorities in both houses of Congress. And we've made a little progress. Um, on day one, President Biden rejoined the Paris Climate Accord. Uh, for as long as we had it in place, the child tax credit was cutting child poverty about in half. I think that the infrastructure bill that was just passed in Congress is gonna have a big impact on places like Mansfield. Uh, in terms of jobs and transportation and a transition to a clean energy economy. But Washington's broken. And I think we'd be foolish to look to Congress for the solutions to the really big problems we face. Racial injustice, the climate crisis, attacks on our democracy and workers' rights, reproductive rights, LGBTQ rights, student loan debt and gun violence. For the solutions to the really big problems we face, we're gonna to have to look to the states and Massachusetts has this wonderful tradition of leadership. The constitution was born here. We were at the heart of the abolitionist movement. We led the way on equal marriage. We led the way on universal access to healthcare. And I think it's time for Massachusetts to lead again. And the AG has been a big part of that story. The AG under uh, Maura Healy fought back against uh, the corrupt and immoral Trump administration and fought against uh, big banks and insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies. As the people's lawyer, the AG can bring consumer protection cases against predatory lenders, against scammers, against pharmaceutical companies like the Sackler family that lied to us and brought us the opioid crisis. The AG can bring much needed urgency to the fight against racial injustice. The murder of George Floyd and the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict are just the most recent reminders that there are two justice systems in America. And we imprison too many people for too long, for doing too little. Race has too much to do with who ends up in the criminal justice system. The AG can also bring much needed urgency to the fight against the climate crisis. That's when what's gonna determine uh, what kind of a life our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren live. On the issue of workers' rights, we got to fight back against wage theft, against Uber and Lyft trying to misclassify workers and take away their benefits. we got Roe versus Wade is under attack, is hanging on by a thread in the U.S. Supreme Court, states across the country. On the issue that I've spent a lot of my career on, on the issue of voting rights, our democracy is hanging on by a thread, and Congress is blocking any meaningful action. If we're going to have solutions to the attacks on our democracy, they're going to come from the states and they're going to come from the grassroots. So I'd love to have your support in the caucuses and the convention and the statewide primary. We want to build the kind of grassroots campaign that we ran in 2018, the kind that respects and empowers and includes people in communities like Mansfield and all across the, country, all across the Commonwealth. Uh, when I was thinking about running for office a few years ago, it was right after those awful events in Charlottesville. Since then, we've seen children in cages. We've seen collusion between the Oval Office and foreign powers. We've seen an armed mob storm the Capitol while Congress was in the middle of its most sacred duty to usher in a peaceful transition of power. And I think we need to ask ourselves, what are we gonna tell our children and our grandchildren that we did in this moment when our American values were so obviously under attack. And I wanna be able to say we stood up and we fought back and we pounded our fists on the table and screamed till we were hoarse that this isn't the kind of America we wanna live in. So I'd love to have your support and I wanna join with you to build a grassroots movement from Mansfield to the Berkshires to take back our democracy and lead on the issues that affect us every day. I'm Quentin Palfrey and I'd love to have your support. Thank you, Quentin. Do we have any questions for Quentin? Any questions? No? I'm checking both screens. Okay. I guess everybody already knows you, Quentin. It's the end, um, of, end of a long night. I appreciate you bearing <laughs> with me um, uh, and, and really look forward to, to seeing you all soon. Um, uh, I think my colleague Ben put some, some notes in the chat. We'd love to stay in touch with you. Be honored to have your support at the convention. If there are folks, uh, you know, the folks in this community have already started doing some phone calls and some uh, some grassroots support, I'm very grateful 
uh, for that help and would love to have your help uh, as we build out this campaign. Okay, um, Jean has a question. No, Hi, Jean, not, how are you? Thanks I for quite, all your help. I, I would just like to say, I'm, I'm so glad to hear you talking, Quentin, about the national scene um, and, uh, and not just the Massachusetts scene, because I, I think it's, it's, it's crucially important right now for the, the states to be looking to the bigger picture in this country. And, and uh, I'm glad you're on, you know, you're on it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jean. I really appreciate it. Okay, anyone else? Okay, yeah, and have Ben, if you send us his material, we can put it on our website, send us Quentin's material. Um, Wonderful, so you, you want to thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for coming, Quentin, nice to see nice you. Nice to see you, thanks a lot.